Welcome to Next Tech AR's Creators Lab. I'm Vivian Chen, Global Head of Digital Sales at Next Tech AR. We are going to show you how storytelling and technology come together. So today, I'm going to show you just how you can create a cooking show sponsored with product placement. We believe that augmented reality is the future for e-commerce. This is Philips Air Fryer. Philips was the first company to innovate in air fryers. This puppy started in 2010, where Philips patented the rapid air technology in Germany. So if you think about it, this was disruptive technology, where now you don't really need an oven and you don't really need a deep fryer. You just need one appliance. It's about convergence. Shopping is gonna converge because we're gonna be bringing 3D objects into your shopping experience. So we're seeing the world of convergence happen everywhere in our lives over the next five to 10 years. This is what digital transformation is about. Today's episode was brought to you by vacuumcleanersmarket.com and the Philips Red Air Fryer. So let's start today's cooking show. Let me first preface that I am not a professional cook, but a working professional who can make a pretty solid meal in 15 to 20 minutes. Today, I'm making a recipe from a food blogger named Tiffy Cooks on Instagram. It's a lemongrass chicken uh, cooked uh, with just five ingredients on the Philips air fryer. This air fryer has changed my life. It makes an oven and deep fryer look like a dinosaur. You can put French fries with no oil in eight minutes, grilled sausages in like 10, and there's like, you're, nothing's gonna burn. Like you literally, it's, this reminds me of that Hasbro toy, baking toy that they used to have. You literally open it and then close it, press the button and you're, you know, you're all, you're all ready to go. The main ingredient for our lemongrass chicken recipe today, as you know, is lemongrass. Um, you can get lemongrass from pretty much any Asian market or some of the larger supermarkets like Superstore will carry lemongrass. And I got this via Instacart, so they deliver now, um, thankfully, since I don't have time to go shopping anymore. The other ingredients that are essential are the fish sauce from Golden Boy. I feel like this is the fish sauce. It's like Heinz ketchup. This is the Heinz ketchup of fish sauces. So look for the big baby uh, on the bottle to make sure you've got the right one. And again, all food tastes great when you've got garlic. And I love this garlic. It is a no-name brand garlic from Superstore again, and it's called Naturally Imperfect. Vietnamese cooking, lots of sugar. It's like a shocking amount of sugar. Um, you'll be so surprised how much sugar we're gonna be using today. Sugar is essential in uh, Southeast Asian cooking. And then last but not least, chicken. Um, I like chicken with the skin on, um, the dark meat, the thighs. Uh, I find it's a little more juicy, but I've also done this recipe with just chicken breast. Uh, skin or no skin, um, totally your preference. So five ingredients, fish sauce, garlic, lemongrass, white sugar, and chicken. So here we go with lemongrass chicken. The first thing that you do is you need lemongrass. And so I'm going to chop up some lemongrass. Um, the lemongrass is kind of hard on the outside, so you kind of have to just like peel out, you gotta peel out all the, the dry bits and, um, and yeah, strip it out. Um, but surprisingly, it doesn't have to be super soft because once it bakes, um, it crisps up and, uh, and you can eat it. So it, you, you don't need to look for super soft, but you know, just strip out maybe two, three layers. What you wanna do then is literally just chop it fine. And you know what, it's amazing. As I'm cutting this, the aromas, the oils from this lemongrass, I can like literally smell it. It's like incredible. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do this kind of cross chut so that we make it into smaller delicious bits. And I'm just gonna throw everything into this bowl. This is where the marinade's gonna uh, take place. So we're literally, it's a five ingredient marinade. Lemongrass is in. Next we need some garlic. Um, you can use as much garlic or as little garlic as you like. If you like garlic, go at it. I think what we'll do here today is we'll do about three cloves of garlic. So again, just rough chop. Uh, rough chop your garlic bits. They don't have to be super fine. 
or, or crushed. You, you want bits of garlic in your marinade and you want to have crunchy bits of garlic on your chicken. I just go really rough. As you can see, my knife skills are pretty basic. We're not here to teach you knife skills on this show, that's for sure. All right, so garlic is ready. Pour the garlic into the marinade. All right, garlic and lemongrass are in the bowl. Next, it's as easy as this. So we basically wanna do, um, it's the same ratio. So for every two tablespoons of sugar, you do two tablespoons of the fish sauce. So it's really as simple as that. So let's do the sugar first. We'll do the dry ingredients first. Two tablespoons of white sugar. The first tablespoon, the second. All right. And then we'll do two tablespoons of the fish sauce. So it's just equal parts. All right. I feel like there's more fish sauce that I might be missing. So let me double check the recipe right now because I'm like, I think it's two to one. Hold on a second. We'll be right back. I think I got it wrong. <laughs> Is that funny? All right, so because this bowl is a little larger, I'm going to actually um, increase the uh, fish sauce. I'm gonna double the marinade. So I'm gonna do um, four tablespoons of fish sauce and uh, four tablespoons of sugar. Uh, let me just kind of mix this up a little bit. Great, so you just you kind of lean to let the, the sugar kind of dissolve a little bit. And now we're just gonna put the chicken in. It's so simple. This chicken just needs to marinate for 40 minutes, like th you know, 40 minutes to an hour. And uh, you're ready to uh, put it in the air fryer um, for about 15 minutes and you've got like a beautiful meal. What I would do during this marinating process is just to um, maybe move the chicken around so that all the chicken is getting the delicious marinade. But it literally is as simple as that. We're gonna put the marinade on. Five ingredients, we're set, and uh, we'll check back in in 40 minutes. So while we're waiting, let's talk about technology. Augmented reality 3D models can be viewed on a web browser. This is called Web AR. Web AR is used in e-commerce. It will become the standard in how you experience and demo products going forward. According to a recent Deloitte and Snap study, nearly three in four consumers are willing to pay more for products that offer total transparency that augmented reality can provide. At Next Tech AR, we've been developing Web AR solutions for years applying it successfully on vacuumcleanersmarket.com. Our data shows that you can get from two to 33% conversion rates on a consistent basis. The current conversion rate for e-com ranges more from 0.5 to 1%. Augmented reality is a force multiplier for e-com. So if you two to four X your conversion rates, you essentially two to four X your business. It's like watching Simone Biles do the double your Chenko bike. So please like, comments, and subscribe to Vivian channel. And also don't forget to click the bell for notifications. And if you wanna buy the Red Phillips air fryer today, I'm leaving a special discount code in the description. Also, if you wanna check out Web AR, details are in the links. I hope you enjoyed this Next Tech AR Creators Lab cooking show. Let me know in the comments below what videos you'd like me to create next time. Hello, everybody. So thank you for tuning in to my first augmented reality cooking show. Um, I'm Vivian Chan, head of global digital sales at Next Tech AR Solutions. And um, I'm here now to take any questions about cooking on the air fryer um, or web AR technology or any technology questions that you guys have. So thanks for tuning in again today. Um, also, just a, a heads up in the chat today, we've also got links uh, for you to literally demo the Philips Red Air Fryer um, as a web AR asset. And that link is in the chat. So just copy and paste that and you can kind of uh, test it yourself on how web AR works. And then finally, um, you know, we've got a couple of questions coming in. So we'll get to that. If you want to get a hold of me, um, you can find me on LinkedIn at Red Threads 8. So that's um, also my link and that's in the chat as well. So um, 
Great. So uh, first question from Cassie is, um, you know, who have you worked with, uh, uh, who has Next Tech worked with on web AR and is web AR only for e-commerce? So great question, Cassie. Um, the question around, first of all, who have we worked with um, it, when web AR, we've worked with a number of consumer brands ranging from household goods um, all the way to jewelry, um, clothing, and um, anyone that's kind of got a physical product where a digital demonstration of it creates value. Um, we work with, you know, uh, a number of these brands ranging from Mr. Steak. We work with Mr. Steak to sell barbecues. Um, we worked with uh, Kmart. Um, you know, to sell furniture and Kohl's to sell furniture. And we're, we're finding a lot of success in that. People are able to kind of envision um, a, a piece by being able to have a 3D view of it. And so we're finding WebAR work particularly well in, in product categories like that. Um, and jewelry as well. Um, our dwell times on our WebAR are two minutes plus. So, you know, I was looking at the data recently and they literally are two minutes um, in the two to three minute range um, is what we're seeing. And so if you think about that, um, people are spending a lot of time sort of in the consideration phase of a product when they use web AR. Um, and that's where you kind of want the consumer, right? You want the consumer to be really seriously consuming, um, considering uh, buying that product. So that's what we've been working on web AR. The second question that you had, which is a great one is, is web AR only for e-commerce? And the answer is no, there are other applications for, for web AR. However, web AR is getting a lot of traction with e-commerce, you know, during, you know, the transition to the, to sort of a post pandemic world, We've seen that uh, for most retailers and brands that we've worked with, once, you know, in the past, you know, retail sales were probably 70 to 80% of their revenue. Well, that's shifted in the last 18 months. Uh, everyone that we've been talking to strategically is seeing their online sales become more of the bulk. Um, so there's been kind of an inversion, you know, um, case in point with Lululemon, um, their sales are now, I believe, 70 to 75% online and um, their in-person stores now uh, create a different function. It's more of a, a showroom, um, and but they're in, even encouraging people to buy online. So that's what we're seeing. So e-commerce, major, major use case, massive market for, for us, but we're also starting to venture and embed web AR, which is essentially being able to use a web browser to view 3D objects into what we call um, digital advertising. And so the banner ads that we, um, that you can produce can be in a 3D uh, format as well, meaning you'll have a sort of a 3D product inside the banner that you can kind of play with and whatnot. So those are some things that we're particularly excited about because, you know, um, we often tune out to banner advertising. And when you've got something that drives a, a level of engagement, um, that may uh, drive more successful click-throughs in banner ads. So we're working on that as well. Um, next question um, that I see here from John is, um, so, you know, it, you know, why hasn't there been mass adoption of web AR? You know, why, why are major brands not all having um, sort of 3D assets on their website? I don't see it on every website yet. That's a really good um, observation and, and, and comment actually, John. So thank you for, for sharing that, 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 that note. Web AR isn't mass produced yet because one of the biggest challenges that we've uh, heard and seen in the last uh, you know, three years from brands is that the creation of 3D objects and models is expensive. Um, you know, the more detail your object, the harder it is. Um, so a simple, um, let's say flower pot that is one color, you know, it's got a very clean shape is very, fairly easy to produce. You could probably produce that, um, you know, for several hundred dollars. But if you're looking at creating a more complicated object, like a blender, which has got a lot of like, you know, it's got some different textures, it's got different, like it's got a shiny part, it's got different detailed buttons. That could be in the several thousand dollars to create that 3D model asset that goes into web AR. And so what we found, again, working with, you know, hundreds of brands is that in, in order to scale web AR, 
um, as a, a, a standard, we have to um, really make content creation of those three assets more affordable and scalable. So, you know, you could take that budget for that one object and be able to scale it to, you know, 10 to 20 products instead of just one. And so we found that in order to do that, um, we had to get into um, uh, the business of creating and scaling uh, 3D content. And so Next Tech uh, took the big move. Um, a few weeks ago, we uh, announced our acquisition of 3D AI. And 3D AI essentially solves that problem around the log jam and the costs of creating 3D models. Uh, 3D AI essentially takes um, your photos, your product photos, and uh, puts them through a process where it converts it into a 3D model um, that then embeds into your site. In fact, it's so easy that literally it's um, JavaScript code that uh, takes the photos from your e-com site. It goes through its processing using um, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, which kind of helps put that asset together, fills in the gaps, and then it literally will automatically link it back to your website. So we've made this incredibly seamless, easy three-step process to um, convert all your photos into a 3D um, web AR asset onto your e-commerce site. And so we think this is a game changer because we are solving one of the biggest scale up challenges for web AR, um, which is really the 3D asset creation model and making that um, very, very affordable. In fact, um, our model is a pay-per-click model. So we're not, um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not, um, it, it's really a paper for, for, for performance model, which we're very excited about to roll out. And we're rolling this out with a, a number of major retailers like Kohl's, who is putting several thousand uh, models on their um, website through WebAR and this conversion process, Kmart and Pier One. So we're, we've gotten a lot of traction um, in the furniture sector um, and we're looking to do more uh, product conversions with many retailers and we're partnering with them. Um, more announcements to come on that area. All right, so next question. Um, this is a fun one uh, from Nancy. What are other recipes do you have on the air fryer that uh, besides lemongrass chicken? Um, I truly love the air fryer. And so it, it was really fun creating this video to um, talk about uh, technology and a product that I really love, both products that I really love. Um, the air fryer has been a staple in my home. Um, it's a shortcut to cooking. So the other things I love cooking on air fryer are, um, basically reheating fries, French fries or chicken McNuggets. It makes it super crispy without the oil. So that's a, that's a weeknight cheat. And then roasted vegetables, um, roasted Brussels sprouts and broccoli is just like perfect. When, whereas when you put it in the oven, it sometimes gets a little soggy, but on the air fryer, there's this extra crispness to it. And then another weird hack is that Sometimes if you buy a hamburger and it sits, um, sits there too long, you know, you've got like literally, you know, 15 minutes to eat a hamburger while it's hot. Um, you just kind of reheat it in the air fryer and it tastes great again. So I have a feeling McDonald's has been using uh, air fryer technology longer than we, uh, than we, than we realized. I, I bet you they just air, like they air fryer everything. Um, so that's, that's that. Okay, uh, last question. And again, if there's any more questions, feel free to send. But this is, uh, this is uh, let me just check it out. The last question, uh, again, from, from Nancy is, um, why does web AR drive conversion? You mentioned two to 33, uh, two to 22% uh, conversion rates. Um, why, why what, what is happening that makes conversion happen when you've got sort of a, a 3D asset on a web browser? I would say that why it drives conversion is, is again, really back to this notion of try before you buy. When you have a 3D asset of your product, you're able to give your consumers uh, a sense of confidence about what they're buying. They're able to digitally sample or digitally try uh, and play with uh, that product. So they're able to kind of, um, you know, imagine what that table would look like in your living room. Um, they're able to kind of like look at the dimensions of what the air fryer looks like, um, you know, and, and how that would fit in, in your kitchen. And so 
you know, we've noticed that because it drives engagement, the longer uh, you engage uh, on a website, the more probability you will buy something. You know, there's a, a problem called uh, shopping cart abandonment, and that's a trillion dollar, depending on who you ask, it's a billion to trillion dollar issue. You know, how many times have we all shopped and we've been humming and hawing and we put something in the shopping cart to hold it, but then we end up not pulling the trigger to, to try that product. Well, you know, if you're able to capture a consumer's attention long enough, they may be able to go through that decision-making process to say, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy it. I have confidence in what I'm buying now, and so that's why we're seeing above-average conversions, um, particularly in our household goods. And and so this is an area that's so unique to Next Tech AR. We own VacuumCleanersMarket.com, and we've been testing Web AR on our household goods uh, website for a number of years now uh, with great success. And that business has grown along with the adoption of Web AR. And so, um, you know, uh, we are a innovative company that is using applied innovation on the businesses that we run and are learning how that scales. And again, to scale that, we needed to uh, scale, you know, 3D asset content creation. And so here we are, um, you know, using the products that, that we believe in and the products that we think are gonna make business impact. So thank you everyone for your questions and for making time to join my first cooking show. Uh, if you've got other ideas for what shows and content you would like on Vivian's channel, um, again, send me a note and uh, looking forward to seeing you again on the next episode uh, that will be taking place. Um, we have uh, Roz McNulty, who is a digital um, fashion and technology expert who will be joining um, next week. Oh, and uh, we have one more question. All right. So what type of products do you think benefit the most from Web AR, from Dasha? So we'll, we'll squeeze in the last one. Um, I think, again, you know, it's so interesting. I think it's goods that may have more functionality that, that benefit. So, um, you know, Electronics work really well because there's you're trying to see what that electronic looks like. Things that have a little bit more of a function or things that have a spatial component to it. So again, we know that furniture works really well because you're trying to imagine what that furniture piece looks like in your space. And we're actually building um, um, digital showrooms where you can literally put the dimensions of your room, put multiple um, furniture uh, from different brands into that room to kind of like do a, a virtual configuration of what your new living room would look like. Um, so things that require space, uh, dimensions, you know, web AR is amazing. And then I would also say um, things that have got more functionality to it. Um, you know, the guitars behind me would be great in web AR, right? I mean, um, every guitar has a different personality and flavor. What makes a Stratocaster with rosewood or in cherry red is a little different. And if you were able to kind of see it and engage with it, I think it's gonna help um, folks make decisions on which Stratocaster to buy. So, all right, well, we're running out of time for questions. Again, thank you everyone for joining Vivian channel and hope to see you again next week. Bye for now.